on the topic of flat packs and all this, there's the immutable. I, would you call them spins? How how do you uh, describe them in uh, the project? Yeah, let's let's say spins. Okay. Um, okay. I we don't have a term. Naming things is hard. It's and just it's immutable desktops got, on here. That's all it's it is. It's kind of gotten out of control with um, all the different fun names people. Like, people like Silver Blue, and then we had Kino White, and then mm. Sarika, and then. Yeah. I, I, so, um, I don't know. We're going to have to rein that in. But yeah, I, I, for now. I um, did talk about this in a recent video. Yeah. There's, there's um, Onyx, and yeah. Yeah, part of. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Naming's na naming. It's one of the yeah. famously hard problems. Uh, but immutable uh, is also not really right no. for what <laughs> what silver blue is. So I don't like that either. And uh, Colin, who's the author of OS Tree, you know, he really hates it. I'm um, seeing a lot more people so, use like image base now, which seems like a much yeah, better but term. The, but the thing is, like, that's not what OS Tree is. It's different from the image based ones. Yeah. It's uh, <laughs> it's not an image based at all. Um, so like image based, it, like that's a whole different thing. Like that's mm -hmm. actually like uh, Leonard and now at Microsoft is working on image based. Like that's like they're seriously image based. Like that's the whole thing, right? Like there's different approaches that are really are image based. So this mm -hmm. is something different as well. But it's sort of in the same pro the same family of problem solving i don't it's know definitely a better um, term than immutable because like the problem with immutable yeah. is i've oh, God, my comments when we're talking about immutable desktops every time someone's like oh it's immutable therefore nothing changes like this is the problem with immutable like yeah, that, it's right. such a bad term <laughs> it has so yeah so much meaning attached to it so before red hat bought Coro has the company. We had this thing called Project Atomic, um, which yes. was where all this is done in. And I am, am trying to convince the people at Red Hat who are the holders still of the Atomic name mm -hmm. that would wouldn't it be nice if we just be able to use that? <laughs> um, but I've got to I've got to I do some more sweet talking to mm -hmm. get to there because I think Atomic is a fine thing for describes what it kind of how it works. The updates are atomic in a technical way and mm -hmm. also it's a really cool logo yeah we can just uh, so, we can just go uh, like uh, full circle with silver blue just okay. in yeah. <laughs> yeah. so uh, we, we started at fedora atomic workstation now we can go fedora atomic gnome fedora atomic yeah. kde like this is it's like it's straight to the point i understood why silver blue came about as a name like it's a much it's for fedora atomic workstation is like you know it's it's it, it's very much Fedora. People who don't like Fedora are going to have a weird yeah. opinion of it. Silver well, looks like this new thing. Yeah, and there's something to that, although I would like to, you know, we, we want to get Fedora in there to make sure people people know that we mm -hmm. can... Uh, but, like, it it but, definitely helped early on, but now that, it, it, now that like, the immutable desktop has yeah. this appeal to it, I don't think it's needed as much. Yeah, and I think it kind of helped, helped doing that helped uh, break the idea that Fedora could only do things one way. Right, right. And so once 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 people understand that, we don't actually need the forcing function quite so much for it. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, kind of going back to this whole thing, I, I'm, I'm going to interpret the question I think you were asking, which was, Go ahead. Uh, we, are, are we going there? And so this is part of our the strategy proposal. I talked about setting strategy. And one of the things, you know, that's a direction we could go in. But mm -hmm. part of the problem is um, Fedora Workstation and our traditional model it works pretty well, mm -hmm. um, so it, it's again hard to make a big make big commitment to it. And right. uh, I think we have to make a declaration, and that's what we plan to do. Say so this is our strategy. We are going towards this approach for our systems. This is mm -hmm. going to be the main way you know, Fedora will be consumed. Possibly ending the naming problem because it will just be like that's how you know, Fedora mm -hmm. Linux systems are. Um, and you know I don't. I, I don't know what the target date is for that. There are definitely some problems to solve, but I think that's the direction. It's the direction everybody's going. I think it's the direction mm -hmm. we'll go there as well. And you know that also helps with the um, the, the problem with sometimes things are broken. Um, you know, uh, with with this, you can roll back and uh, and go back to an earlier version. And OS Tree has a really neat thing where you can actually bisect. Mm -hmm. Which is basically, um, if you know, you know, this worked last week. It doesn't mm -hmm. work now. So you can say, okay, let's go back to three days ago. Does it work? Okay, and then and just you know, by dividing in half, do that binary search mm -hmm. and very quickly find here's the change that caused the problem. Mm -hmm. And then you know, the person we can can report it to the that particular package, and then they can do you know, they can find the bug. So it actually really makes 
finding what caused an issue um, much easier as well. Um, mm -hmm. I, you know, I can't promise there'll never be issues, but I think that's a, that's going to be really powerful as well. For your personal daily driving system, what are you actually running? Is it just like mainline Fedora workstation or? Yeah, this is ma mainline Fedora workstation here and on my other desktop. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm planning to reinstall with Silverblue on my laptop mm -hmm. after I give my talk um, at, at the next conference. Mm -hmm. uh, I have, I've, I've played with it a few times before, but I've never kept it on a system. And as I'm saying, we need to commit. It's time for me to commit as well. And then I will probably also move these other systems as well mm -hmm. well it's it's definitely i i'm sort of intrigued by it especially with tools like distrobox being available now where it's it's made that whole uh like it, it's made that sort of bridging the gap because the problem with a purely immutable system is you know you got your you got your flat packs and the flat packs will address most things but sometimes there are things that like can't be done in the flat packs yeah. Right, so, and we have your know, toolbox. Toolbox is, as well. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right, yeah, right. Um, and I don't know. I, I, I'm not involved in uh, directly in this. I wonder if maybe we should just you know, merge in with Distrobox and go go with that. Um, you know, uh, we would would like to encourage people to use you know Fedora um, mm -hmm. for their thing there. But whatever. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I we should also go with what what what's more powerful what people are using. But I would actually like you can certainly it so like that... the, these DMs are open. You can certainly have a, like discussion, see yeah. what, what's going to go on. Like, yeah, try and work something out. Yeah, um, I I there was something that uh, one of the uh, GNOME designers who works on Fedora did mm -hmm. a while ago, uh, where it was actually a terminal replacement that was aware of the environment, um, mm, and so you yeah, had yeah. Term, terminal UI that understood what you were in. And I really think, like, I think that's something that would be worth working on. Similar to what um, um, Windows does with WSL. Possibly, I'm not. I'm not sure. I I, I, I haven't run Windows. For okay, years, well, on um, so. on on Windows with their their new terminal, like if you open up like an Ubuntu environment, it has like a little Ubuntu logo being like you're in Ubuntu. If you feel like PowerShell, it tells you like you're in PowerShell. Yeah, uh, but not just that, but um, being able to switch environments from menus and actually right, have right, GUI right. control over what's going on as well. Uh, but then I would also, as the next step of that, the default when you open up a terminal window should be inside a, a toolbox environment rather than on the host system. Mm -hmm, Going mm -hmm. to the host system should be a, oh, yes, I actually want to mess with that level of thing. Right, right. Um, and I think that would mm -hmm. that will kind of help the whole thing work together mm -hmm. uh one of the big unsolved problems is how to make things like vs code um and ides that don't run inside you know the terminal mm -hmm. work nicely with that kind of environment i think we've need, we obviously need to get that solved nicely mm -hmm. in order to really make this the mainstream solution mm. um but i think we'll get there so.